Hi everyone, and welcome to Fan Commentary on Dark Wish Part 3, the final part. This episode, it's not the best one out of the three. I would say Part 2, Part 1, then Part 3. It's not a horrible episode. It, it does service what it has to do, but because the way it's structured, meaning because it has to wrap up all the Mystic Force elements, and then it has to combine basically two episodes, not two episodes worth, of episodes from Maji Ranger into one. There was a lot of stuff to cover in this episode, so this one feels more rushed compared to part two. Which, I'm not saying this needed a fourth part, because it really didn't. It's just that because of where we left off in part two, where the Rangers had didn't learn their lesson of what they didn't realize what they did, and, you know, they were giving up, the beginning part felt rushed. You know, oh, you know, we're going to give up. We didn't re we didn't realize what we did wrong. And the tribunal was like, don't give up. And blah, blah, blah. But then all of a sudden, it's just a minute or two later, all of a sudden, it's just like, nah, we're still going to fight. And they don't really listen to anything. And then they, they relinquish the wish. That part is what's not really good. I think if they had combined it, say, the two ranger fights, the one here and the one later on when Daggeron first pops in with them, and they just omitted the, I think the middle part where, you know, Daggeron and Udana talk to each other again, just like kind of just join them together and then shrunkate a certain bit of the fight so that Daggeron can join them faster. And then they give a few minutes of them, of them, you know, falling into despair and then Nick rising to the occasion rather than just going right to that point. I think it would have played out a little bit more because it just feels a little too rushed where the tribunal immediately reverses the wish after all the arguing and the complaining and the failing in part two. I mean, they could have probably structured it a little bit better and moved some of this into part two. The problem is there's a lot of material in part two that I wouldn't like to get lost. I don't want them to put a part four because that would be too much and they really don't need that. But again, it's also an issue because like I said, the legend powers and Maji Ranger went on for several episodes longer than this. Actually, it was a slow build up. I think the tribunal were not utilized too well in this because again, they're just kind of like an afterthought. It's just mainly because they're just going through the motions. I, like I said, the, the second part where they give them the legend powers, that was fine. I just wish they didn't like, we because we they cut to them a lot of times. I think if they left it a little bit more ambiguous, meaning we only see them from like at the end of part two, and we just see them, like see them. They don't speak, they don't see, say nothing, and they see what the rangers are doing, and then they make their decision, and then it's reversed. I think that would have played out more better rather than talking for you know a few times and cutting back and forth because it's a lot of talking where it really you could just play on the emotion. If you think about it, the Rangers have always been courageous and they have always, you know, pushed themselves beyond. They've always been honorable. And you think all those circumstances, even though they screwed up here, that would warrant them, oh, yeah, here, here's the reverse wish. Because that's what they used in this case for why they reversed the wish. That's why I wish it was just played out from what they viewed them from here. This was kind of wonky how they did this because they, she, they said they want to reverse the wish. So you'd think they would reverse the wish and everyone would be placed back to where they were, where they literally wouldn't remember anything except for the Rangers. I think that's what they should have done rather than Udana and Claire be confused. They just reset because it does waste a few extra seconds of time that could be diverted to the Rangers learning their lesson. 
the fights in part three are perfectly great. They're fine. They live up to what you want because, again, part two was very slow. But I will say, though, even though the fight scenes were great in part three, Maji Ranger's build up to the legendary powers was overall better because, like I said, I like an emotional story with the action where they blend them together. Well, this one's just pure action. Also, it sucks, like I had said, Daggeron wasn't with them in part two. I wish he was, even though he would have been a, you know, a second fiddle on the group, confused and not knowing what's going on. If he had been in them with part two, he would be here already so they can actually shrunkate all the material. Like from here, he doesn't have to meet them again. I understand why they cut him out. In the original Maji Ranger episode, he was removed for the most part because there was just a lot of times where he was separated from them, isolated, you know, you know, trained to power. Plus he was trying to figure out where the monsters were going and coming from the different dimensions. I think also part three shows you that even though you don't have a lot of money to do these specials, they only shoot in this really this one big area, which is just filled with old cars and garbage. It shows that they could get away with stuff with very little money, which you know could have been done in many other episodes, which I wish they did because they, here they show they tried. They gave you something, even though it's not a lot, they gave us something. This, I think it was okay. I thought it was a cool idea because I thought, you know, realistically, if they reverse the wish, why doesn't just Jinji get, you know, re immediately released from here and taken away? But I like this. They, at least they gave Lily something. It's better to at least see her here, even though it's a dumb joke, rather than just her being ignored most of the time, which this is the thing I hated about this character. They really didn't use her at all. And I think the reason why is that they probably, when they created the character, they had the idea of, well... Nai and Mare exist in Maji Rangers, two characters, and we may want to do that or at least keep that dynamic. But then they ended up never doing it because the Nai Mare stuff is Sentai footage they can't really use. Another reason why the episode feels rushed and com with all the uh, Sentai footage, it's because at this point, this is where the Rangers were, you know, fighting with each other in the sense where Magi Shine was, you know, trying to help them. He was failing because he was trying too hard in his way rather than letting them find their own way. Not all of them are like him, so that was the, you know, falling out. It suffers a little bit from that. But that's the thing that I hated the most from... The, in from Maji Ranger the Mystic Force, I like the family dynamic in Maji Ranger, and it played out really well. I'm not saying they should have done that in Mystic Force. No, I'm not saying that, because what they did with the characters here, fine. 
It's just that because of the way they went, it caused the season to lack important bits. And I think that's just the main problem with the characters because they cut out the family dynamic and they couldn't do anything like that. And they didn't care to do like original stories for the characters. It lost that chance of doing something with them. So that's the conundrum you have. You want to do original stories because it's better in P for PR. But if you copy the Sentai, for the most part, you get a chance to do more of the Sentai story and they'll focus more on it, giving us more you know, bits of the characters. It's like, which poison do you take? Would you rather it just be a carbon copy of the Sentai? Or would it be a, you know nice to have an original story, but they don't do anything with the characters? I didn't really think the tribunal was needed here because I know what they were trying to do. They were trying to, you know, in reinforce that, you know, Korag is different from them. I really, they really didn't need to do it. We understand that at this point, and they could have just simply saved that time. If you pay attention closely, you can tell that the entire environment changes because in uh, Maji Ranger, this is a completely different how they, they come in at the last minute before uh, Magi Shine was killed. And that's when they had gotten their legend powers unlocked. Now for the legend powers, uh, it's my second most favorite team power up. Uh, Lights of Orion will probably be my favorite one out of all of them. But the uh, legend mode, I think, was really a really nice design. I wish there were proper figures made of them, either in the Legacy line or in now Hasbro's Lightning Collection. I would like figures of all five of them in this mode because I always thought the Rangers actually look cooler without the capes and they had this battle armor on. You know, what's, what's funny, though, is that in um, Maji Ranger's uh, toy, the Maji Phone, unfortunately, they didn't plan ahead and program the legend mode into the toy. Unless you bought the later version that came with a cape, if I remember correctly, that's the one that has it in. That's the one that's extremely difficult to find. Mystic Force, unfortunately, did the same thing. You think they would have learned their lesson from Maji Ranger and be like, okay, we have the legend mode, we have to program it in. And just, you know, keep it hidden, obviously. But they didn't do it either. So there's really no special anything for either phones unless you got the later version of the Maji phone. I also really like the um, Mystic Staff. The only thing I hated, though, is that I wish there was a legacy version of it because it's a really nice staff and the toy version of it is extremely small. It's really poor. And it can't even transform into the... Arrow mode. Now, the one thing I always found curious is that why did the uh, Mystic uh, Legend staff? only have the five codes and you'd think they would put 
you know, 10 numbers on it so that they can actually access their magic spells from the staff if needed, rather than pulling out the um, Mystic Morpher. Oh, and this was also the time where they, you know, censored the Red Ranger's fire spell. I, I never understood that whole uh, that whole thing with um, censoring fire. It happened even in SPD. They, whenever you saw Shadow Ranger's finisher, they changed the color from red to blue. In Mystic Force, most of the time when you see the fire attacks, they have the sparkles added. I never understood that. I always wondered if you could actually translate Udana's uh, Xenotone book. It, was there any language set up, or was it just generic gibberish of magical elements that they you know, put together real quick? Because we don't really see the book as all that much, but it's a nice book, and it has cool details. I wish they had used it more often, because it showed like how certain things worked. It would be nice if they had like, explained how things, like how the... Root core was created, things like that. It would have been nice if the book had explained it. Now, this is from another part of uh, another episode of Maji Ranger. That's why it's like going all over the place. In the original Maji Ranger episode, Maji Shine and Travelon are fighting this guy for, you know, a good five minutes. But in here, they can't really, you know, delve on that. So they have to just go into it real quick and then just remove him because we have to explain why he doesn't appear in the later fight. I always wondered if this monster was kind of a, a, a you know, stealing Daggeron's powers because a lot of the abilities that this guy does does mimic the, you know, um, Solar Strike's abilities, like the remote train cars. It had those things. I remember in one particular episode, Nick actually incorrectly said code two, I think, when he was turning into the mystic uh, firebird. Uh, speaking of this Megazord, I, everyone knows that I really never liked it. Uh, I think its design is pretty interesting in its Megazord form. Uh, the problem is I never like it when the rangers combined into one thing. Because the whole gimmick of PR is to have each ranger control their own individual individual zord that can combine into one thing putting them as one line it just like you really can't do anything with it especially in the show because when they're in the lion form they don't speak that you lose that and that's like one of the main things that the titan zords had over all the other zords that they're them and you can you know they can talk they can show emotions as a lion that's all kind of lost and it just feels more robotic
but it is a nice little nod to past Super Sentai seasons. It has like so many different elements from each of those those like eighties and nineties era Sentai designs. The one thing I do hate, though, is that they didn't change the cockpit at all. You'd think, being a new Zord, it would not be the chessboard that's used inside the standard Titan Megazord. But no, it's the standard one. They go a little lazy on that. Now this, I never liked this scene. I wish they had filmed it somewhere else. Because... Yeah, they acknowledge that Korag is a villain and everyone runs away. The problem is they're in the open and they're talking to this guy. If anyone saw this, you would think these humans are either A, the Rangers, or B, in cahoots with this monster. And you could easily, you know, report them, follow them, and then it would just lead into a whole bunch of... I really wish they had filmed this just in a standard forest and not over here. But I guess it was just to save time, so they filmed it with all the additional stuff they had done. Another thing with that didn't really make any sense was because the wish was reversed, but nothing really reset in that case, Toby was outside, and but then he has the memories of the original timeline and he comes back in and acts like nothing happens. It, it really doesn't make any sense. That's why I wish they had just reversed it completely and then it would have been totally fine that everyone lost their memories except for the Rangers. Overall, the saga was really done it's just three was rushed a little bit but yeah it's the best episodes that mystic force came up with i wish they had just done better in a lot of other areas because this season had a really good potential if you like my content consider leaving a like and subscribing